So in this video, video I'm uh, going to say a few things in general about inflection of Somali verbs. And uh, this video is going to contain quite a bit of information, but uh, just see it as a general introduction where you will get a broad picture of the Somali verb uh, and, and don't try to pick up all the details this time. Uh, we will come back to the details in, in future lectures. So, um, are Somali verbs inflected? Well, from the words I just said, you, you probably understood that there is quite a bit of inflection in, in Somali verbs. Uh, as a comparison, English verbs have very few inflected forms. And most verbs, regular verbs, only have four different forms. Like work, it has a plain form that is used for several different things. There is this third person singular present tense form ending in S. Then there is the form in ing, working and the past form worked that also has, has and, and and both these forms working and worked also have, have different uh, usages um, so uh, it's a quite restricted inflectional system um, some verbs that are less regular have a, a few additional forms like wrote and written uh, past tense and past participle, for example. Uh, but still, it's not very much. So what about the Somali? Uh, uh, well, and then person. Uh, English verbs are inflected for person, person in one single case, and that's the uh, third person singular, the S in the present tense. But that's the only tense where this occurs, and, and it's only one form out of, uh, let's say, six possible forms in, in many languages, at least European languages. Uh, so it's not very much. So um, we could compare with some other uh, European languages, uh, for example, Spanish, which works basically like Italian, French, German, Russian, and most Slavic languages. Uh, so in Spanish, there are different forms for each of the six persons. Uh, so that in Spanish, you can tell from the ending of the verb here, it's a verb in the present tense, uh, whether it's I or you or uh, he, she, uh, we, you, or they, that uh, sing. So, I sing, canto, ends in O, and that makes it um, not really necessary to mention I in Spanish. So, there, of course, is a pronoun yo that could be uh, mentioned together with this verb form, uh, yo, canto, but uh, canto on its own is enough, uh, thanks to the ending. But in English, that doesn't have um, uh, endings for all the different persons. We need to use the pronoun in order to, to make it clear who we are talking about. Uh, another thing that English verbs do have, that many of the other European languages do not really have, at least not uh, as a systematic form, uh, is the progressive form. Uh, so in English, there are uh, always a pair of forms in every tense. Uh, so there is a simple form, simple present form, I sing, and a progressive a present form, I am singing. Uh, past simple I sang and a past progressive I was singing and so on 
and that's very very similar to Somali actually. Uh, then uh, many languages have different moods uh, and something that is often uh, distinguished is a m basic mood, uh, generally called the indicative mood, that uh, tells us about real events. And then there are uh, other moods that tell us about events that are not really real, that are unreal in some respect, that are imaginary. Uh, they exist just in our brains and minds, not in the real world. Uh, and in many European languages, there is a mood that is called the subjunctive. Uh, uh, German, Spanish, French, Slavic, and so on, have uh, special forms for these unreal events, imaginary events. Uh, and they are called different things in different languages. Uh, so um, in, in German, they are called the conjunctive. Uh, English, often subjunctive in Slavic languages, they are sometimes called conditional uh, and sometimes also subjunctive. Uh, so there is a variation in, in terminology for basically the same thing many times. Um, yeah, I already said this. And another term that is quite good, I think, is uh, the term irrealis, uh, something unreal, uh, and that's a term I uh, have decided to use in um, this presentation for Somali. So we'll talk about this distinction as a distinction be between real events, realis, and unreal imaginary events, irrealis, in Somali. Um, yeah, so Somali has all the forms that I've been uh, talking about so far in different European languages. And let's have a quick uh, look at them and a few others actually that I haven't mentioned so far. So uh, first of all, Somali verbs are inflected for person. And uh, I talked about the seven, uh, the, the six, different persons in Spanish, but Somali actually has seven persons, as we will see, um, or person forms. So uh, if we start from the singular, I and you are differentiated uh, by a, an addition of a T in the you form in the second person. So I sing hesa and you sing hesta. And then these two forms are recycled, used again in the third person, so that he sings is also hesa, and she sings hesta. And this is where we get the, the extra form in Somali compared to Spanish. In Somali, there is a difference between he and she that we don't have in, in Spanish, French, Italian, and and so on. And then uh, if we go to the plural, the plural is marked with an n, an additional n at the end. So if we compare he sings and they sing, uh, we see that they sing ha has an additional n. He, he san. You sing uh, differs from they sing, the plural you differs from they sing by the addition of a T uh, at the beginning of the ending, uh, just uh, the same way as you in the singular uh, differs from he by the addition of this T. So the second person has this T as its characteristic. Uh, and then the plural you has the N at the end. And we uh, actually also has the N, but not at the end. It's, instead, it's at the beginning of the 
ending. So his na we sing. So that's um, the infection for person in Somali. Then we'll have a quick look at tense. Tense expresses time in language. And uh, in Somali, there are three different tenses. The past tense is generally expressed, expressed by the suffix ai. So he say, I sang, or he sang. Uh, and we already saw that in the present tense, the characteristic vowel is a, ah, so he sa. Uh, and then there is a future tense in Somali that is formed with an auxiliary dona, uh, which originally meant want, wants, uh, but has developed into this grammatical um, word that helps us form the future tense and corresponds to this will in, in, in English. Uh, and the preceding main verb uh, has the uh, infinitive ending, i. So, he sidona will sing. So, that's the, that's the three tenses of Somali. And then we'll move on to the aspects. Uh, aspects uh, is a, the word aspect. Oh, uh, yeah, there it is in English. Uh, so uh, aspect could be translated view by by using the word viewpoint or something like that. It's how how we see the the action, the event, how we look at it, and um, in English we have. Uh, simple and progressive tenses, and that's uh, exactly what we have also in Somali. So there is a simple present tense and a progressive present tense. And the difference in Somali is that there is an extra uh, morpheme, an extra piece of ending uh, before the present tense ending ah. Uh, so uh, the simple form, as we have already seen a couple of times, is he sa, I sing. But in order to make it progressive, I am singing, we add this I in between the stem and the present tense ending. So he sa, ya, I am singing. And uh, we can do the same thing in the past. So we have a simple past that we already saw, he sa, and in order to make it progressive past, we add a. Uh, so now we end up with two i after each other. He say I, I, I was singing. Sorry for that mistake. Uh, yeah, he say I, I was singing. And uh, in the past tense, Somali actually has three aspects. So there is also a habitual past. I used to sing, that is expressed uh, with the help of an auxiliary verb, jire. So, uh, and again, before the auxiliary verb, we have the infinitive form that we saw in the future tense, he si. So, he si jire, I used to sing. And um, the next category we will look at is the category of mood. Uh, that was this category of, of looking at events as real events or imaginary unreal events. So um, the forms we have been looking at so far all belong to the cat category of, of real uh, events verb forms that express real events. So these verb forms belong to the category, to the mood, realis. And then we have the category, irrealis, that uh, in Somali, in most instances, ends in o. 
So the typical uh, ending for the irrealis category, uh, unreal events is all. Uh, but there are also uh, a couple of other moods in Somali. Uh, we also um, count the imperative form uh, as a mood. And in Somali, the imperative has no ending. Uh, so it's just the stem of the verb. And then uh, we have a conditional mood, a conditional form in Somali that is once again formed uh, with an auxiliary verb. This time it's the auxiliary laha uh, that originally meant had, I, I had, uh, but it's been grammaticalized and functions in, in, in Somali today as um, a grammatical marker of this conditional form, conditional mood. And once again, with this auxiliary, we have the Im infinitive. Esi laha. I would have sung. Yeah, so um, that were the uh, main forms of the Somali verbs. Uh, they can be um, categorized together as the finite verb forms. And now we'll have a quick look at a few additional forms that are uh, can be categorized together as the infinite verb forms. And um, first of all, we have the infinitive that we have already seen a couple of times. It's used together with the auxiliary verbs in Somali and uh, one of the typical endings for the infinitive is the ending e. Uh, there are a couple of other possibilities uh, depending on the verb class. So um, uh, this is maybe the most typical, the e, kori, to write. And then uh, we can form a noun of every verb so-called verbal noun. In English, it kind of corresponds to forms ending in ing that can be used as nouns in English. Uh, they can then be preceded by the definite article. So writing, the writing wasn't very good or something like that. Uh, in Somali, uh, these verbal nouns uh, often end in id, that's typical for this uh, verb class to which the verb write belongs in Somali. Korit, writing. And then we have um, a past participle, as it's called in English, written. Uh, in Somali, it's often referred to as the verbal adjective. And uh, these verbal adjectives or past participles always and in an in Somali, Quran, written. And finally, we have this gerund participle in English, uh, writing. The form is writing once again, uh, but uh, this time it's the usage in English that look well works uh, the same way uh, as an adjective works in, in English. You can put it before nouns, a writing boy, a writing girl. And these forms in Somali um, have different gender forms. So if it's a boy who is writing, it will be kora. And if it's a girl who is writing, it will be korta. Uh, and in Somali, uh, these forms are not called gerund participles. Uh, instead, they are called short forms of the verb in the present tense. They're called reduced forms, they're called attributive forms, they're called relative forms. Uh, and there is a jungle of, of, of uh, terminology around uh, these forms. Um, and we'll, of course, come back to that and talk more about these forms in Somali later on. 
yeah and in general there is of course a lot more to say about each and every of the categories that i've mentioned in this short presentation uh, so really this was just meant as a first acquaintance with the somali verb uh, not as something that should be learned right away of course